So you guys know I love a good swimming hole. I mean, when the Texas heat is on, there's nothing better than diving into some refreshing blue, crystal clear water. And there's this one place that may be the most beautiful swimming hole in Texas. The only problem is you got to go to the middle of the desert to find it. But hey, that's just the joy of day tripping right there. Balmorhea! I'm just kidding. Balmoray! <laughs> This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. The tiny burg of Balmoray is way out west, just off I-10 with Pecos to the north, Fort Stockton to the east, Fort Davis to the south, and finally El Paso, a Texas-sized two hours to the west. It's not exactly the middle of nowhere, but it's pretty close. And while millions hustle back and forth along the highway every year, that doesn't seem to phase Balmoray, which rests just far enough away to remain a small, seemingly forgotten town surviving in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert. You know, everything out in West Texas past a certain point just feels so gritty and like authentic. Your first thought when you visit will likely be, what in the world am I doing here? But you'll soon realize why this small town of around 500 attracts thousands of tourists every year. Because among the cactus and the rocks springs up an abundance of life and 15 million gallons of fresh water a day. And if you've ever heard of Balmoray, it's likely because you've heard of Balmoray State Park. Established in the 1930s, this park is a testament to the lasting work of the Civilian Conservation Corps, whose architecture is now the man-made frame around the natural masterpiece of San Solomon Springs. And this is park ranger, Krista Morrison. What's the most common reaction you get to people when they see this the first time? Oh my gosh, I can't <laughs> believe this. How is there so much water in the desert of West Texas? I get people that go, that's fish. <laughs> people just are stunned by it. It's insane. I mean, yeah. look at this. And it's that unexpected, come out of nowhere beauty that leaves people breathless. It's also the fact that the water is like 72 degrees. In the early days, it was nothing more than a hole in the ground. And while the CCC concreted in the sides for easy access, they left most of the bottom natural. And they left the fish, some of which only exist in this pool. This is like uh, swimming down in an aquarium of endangered species. Yeah, and you get to go they swim. nibble on you. Oh, do they? they? Yeah, they'll exfoliate your skin for you. I need a little bit of exfoliation. Who needs a fancy spa <laughs> treatment? Just come here. That's You're right. Fine. This giant pool contains three million gallons of water. And at one end, a high dive. A glorious high dive, helping children conquer fear of heights and belly busters one splash at a time. And I think every kid should have to do a face plant off a high dive at some point in their childhood or else they didn't grow up right. They all do. I know, good. Good, because high dives are disappearing. They're going the way of the buffalo. Well, ours is protected because it's built by the CCC, so it's a historical marker. Oh, that's awesome. So you can't touch it. Can't touch it. Therefore, we can do the same dumb things that they did 75 years ago or whatever. Take that, lawyers, insurance companies, and other enemies of fun. And now, without delay, I shall join in this historic practice. OK, I'm just going to go straight for the high dive. There are no baby steps on Day Tripper. Ah! Time to get wet. I'm approximately 300 feet in the air. I mean, look at this water. I feel like I've jumped into the best swimmable aquarium in Texas. Man, I actually expected it to be a lot colder. It's really nice. I gotta go do that again. This time I'm thinking, cannonball! Oh, that looked like it hurt. Ow! Yeah, that's gonna leave a mark. Can you imagine living out here and getting to do this every day? Woohoo! And the truth is, folks have been doing this for an estimated 11,000 years, making swimming here one of the few wet West Texas traditions. 
So the pool basically makes like a big L. The side over by the high dive is a natural bottom. It's pretty deep, maybe 15 feet. And then this over here is the shallow side, maybe three feet deep, and it's all concreted in. So if you're scared of what may lurk down below, you stay on this side. It's all good. Scared? You shouldn't be. And I want a better look at the fish. But to go deeper and stay longer, well, I'm gonna need some special equipment. Luckily, there's a place just across the street, and I'll take it as a sign that it's scuba time. Although, I'm not really liking the sign of the skies. Man, I can't believe it. You come to the desert, and suddenly it starts raining on you. Like, what are the odds of that? But well, we picked a good time to go and rent some scuba gear, and luckily, there's a little dive shop that's just across from the state park, run by a couple named Daryl and Nita. Hey, sir. Hey, good morning. Daryl. Welcome to Toyville. Hey, it's good to be here. Good to be here. It's been a great morning over there at the Springs, but this uh, little rainstorm blew in. Yeah. This can't be normal. Well, you know, West Texas, if you don't like to wear the weight a minute, it's going to change. There you go. So we're waiting on that sunshine <laughs> to come out. This little shop is an oasis of West Texan art, swimming essentials, and prom dresses. West Texas only makes so much sense sometimes, but it's the only desert lock scuba shop I know of. But then again, this is the only desert scuba I know of. Some people are adrenaline junkies, right? Yeah. So they'll get in that water, they'll dive for 15 minutes, they'll come back over here and say, I've been in there, I dove for 15 minutes, I saw everything there was to see and I'll never be back. Oh gosh. And then on the other hand, you got those that come time after time for years. I am so thankful I didn't have to haul all my scuba gear out here. Same goes for Todd, who somehow always gets wrangled into this. It's kind of odd with a mustache and a beard, uh, yeah. it works. <laughs> <laughs> and looky here, Daryl was right, because here comes the sun again. And now we've entered the world of the pool's permanent residence. Check this out. And you see this gal right here? Well, she's a Comanche Springs pupfish, and this is the only place she lives on Earth. But she's got many familiar neighbors. And you see that one right there? No? Well, it's a Texas spiny softshell turtle. And man, is it fast. I love diving so much because it's a look into a different world. Here at San Solomon Springs, it's a tiny microcosmic world of tiny fish eating even tinier fish, which to me is forever fascinating. The middle section of the pool is 25 to 30 feet deep, and that's right where the natural springs flow out of the ground. It comes out cleaner than drinking water and clearer than the Caribbean, and it's right here in the Texas desert. I think it's about time that we pop up into the daylight ourselves. Woo! But it's nice, it's peaceful down there. Lots Chill. of tiny little fish. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Well, you know what now? I'm yep. starving. Me too. Yeah, let's get some food, man. All right. Yeah. First, gotta figure out how to get out of this water. I know, what, what did they tell us to do? That way. I guess that way. That way. The swimming hole is actually in Toya Vale, which the locals will tell you over and over again is Toya Vale, not Balmeray. But this up here is the town. And when most people come down here, all they do is swim in San Solomon Springs. But we're going to go to town and see what kind of trouble we can find. The single thing most troubling to me right now is my empty stomach. And wouldn't you know it, that one of the best restaurants in this part of Texas is also a gas station. But here's the kicker. The creme de la creme of this fine desert dining is its refrigerated burritos. These are historical burritos. <laughs> These have been around for over 30 years. So we must be doing something right. This is Robert, longtime manager of Juan Carrasco's Mercantile, which has been a market for over 65 years. And it's a lot because of these burritos that they're still rolling strong today. We haven't changed. We've yeah. kept it so they know. They yeah. know, you know, the green chili is going to burn your mouth. You know, and the brisket is the same, you know. Yeah. You pick yeah. your favorite and it doesn't change. Are, are, are all these going to be cleaned out today? Yes. They will be gone and we'll be starting over. I've got green chili, we need to roll. We got chorizo, we need to do I wanted to try so. the green chili. You telling me this is out? That is out. No! <laughs> Can we refill this? We will be refilling. Okay, that. good, good. <laughs> yep, sellouts are a normal thing, especially when folks from the city roll through with their ice chests. 
and they stop here, they got their cooler, <laughs> and they're on their way back home with, you know, 30, 40 burritos, so they can freeze so they have lunch for a month. That's you know? awesome. Now, Juan Carrasco's does all sorts of food, but I got burritos on the brain, and they need to be in my stomach. Bam. One, three, zero, start. I've worked plenty of microwaves in my life. I went to college, and this is what you do. Briskets, green chili, chili Colorado. I'm gonna start with the hottest first. Let me just burn all my taste buds off right away, huh? Oh yeah. Oh man, that is awesome. You know, that tastes like a delicious mom and pop homemade burrito, the kind you find in like a little tiny house restaurant. You know, it's crazy that some of the best food you find in Balmeray is a microwavable burrito. And the even crazier part is that that doesn't speak to the lack of restaurants here in Balmeray, but to how good this burrito is. All right, let's get back to exploring town. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Now, it's a given, Balmeray is a funny name. It's actually a combination of three last names. Balcom, Moore, and Ray three Scotsmen responsible for developing some of the first canal systems in town, which captured the water from the springs and brought it out to the agriculture fields. The canals definitely help grow in crops, but they also give Balmeray a distinctly European feel. Now this is super cool. It's a canal river running right through the heart of town. Kind of like, uh, turns Balmeray into the Venice of West Texas. I just need a gondola and one of those striped shirts and red scarves. Now, all the water that isn't used eventually makes its way to Lake Balmeray. Are you grasping this? A lake in the desert with mountains for a backdrop? As I explore Texas, I'm always reawakened to the fact that this land is unlike any other. You spend too much time in Central or East Texas, you just forget how grand these things are out here. I mean, the peaks are over a mile high. Whew, that's cool. This is God's country, my friends, and we are just passing through. The Davis Mountains out here are so vast, so wide, and so empty that if someone wanted to disappear completely, well, this would be a pretty good place to do it, which is exactly the story of Phantom Lake Camp. Okay, hey, check this out. So this is Phantom Lake Camp. Well, or at least what's left of it. I guess it used to be an old motor inn back in the day when this was the, one of the big major thoroughfares across Texas. Phantom Lake consisted of a few small buildings that could be rented out to tourists passing through. However, in the fall of 1933, no one suspected that those tourists would be John Dillinger and his gang, infamous Chicago gangsters who between a spree of bank robberies drove all the way here to Texas just to disappear. Just picture it, gangster John Dillinger walking this area, going in, slapping down $100 bills and saying, please, I'll take a room for the next few months. Don't ask me any questions. And here's an extra 100 for your time, man. It was true then, and it's still true now. In fact, if they wanted, Dillinger's gang could probably still be hiding completely unnoticed. Hey! Whoa. Who are you? What, what, what you see? Uh, nothing, nobody. Who, who are you with, kid, you with the feds? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, then Two-Tone Tommy sent you, huh? No. Fat Lip Frankie? No. Hoagie no. Hank? No. Pompous Pete? Is that a real name? Well then, who are you with, kid, what's your name? Uh, the Day Tripper, sir, Day Tripper. Oh, I see, I see. We're using code names. All right, well, listen to me right here. You held this and this, and you ah! never saw me not here, not nowhere, you hear that? Now scram, get out of here. They may have caught the rest of my gang, but they'll never catch me, Balmerayville. That was interesting. And while it doesn't seem obvious at first, if you look around, you start to find things out here, like Calera Chapel, an old Western mission built in the early 1900s. Over a hundred years old. Can you imagine what this region looked like a hundred years ago? I mean, it's pretty abandoned today, but you step back that far, and they built this out of rocks and mud. And by the looks of it, they actually still have services here. You got the prayer candles, an offering box. All you need is a few walls, and you've got a place to worship. 
There's much to be said about the amazing faith of Texas. I think everyone must ring the bell though before they depart. Let's hope all the people don't show up starting to go to, <laughs> thinking they're going to church right now. Richie, you got a sermon on hand? You might have to preach to the people of Calera. Oh, the Lord will inspire me, Chef. There you go. Now the pool is certainly the town's biggest draw, but for those not hunting water, well, there's also the sport of hunting rocks. And the best place to start is Balmeray Rock Shop. This place kind of feels like the cluttered antique shops you see on every Texan square. But instead of finding dusty shelves filled with items that are 100 years old, well, these items are a million years old. And this is owner, Sue Franklin. We have all kinds of rocks here, basically uh, jasper and uh, flint. We've got all kinds of agate here. This whole area used to be covered in volcanoes. And because of it, all sorts of exotic rocks are just laying around. And that includes the world famous Balmeray Blue Agate. And cool. that came out of a rock that looked just like this, that I just sliced it in half and threw it in the, the tumbler. Wow. And that's what came out. What is it about rocks? What do you think? They feel like Christmas gifts. You pick up a rock and like this, you, know, you don't know what's in there until you cut it in half. And back in the chop shop, it's Christmas every day. Just went through that like a warm knife through butter. Yeah, just about. That is a boulder and this thing is chopping it in half. It makes slices of it. Is it like have settings like deli meat? You can go one Pretty or two. Pretty much. Like <laughs> oh, watch your fingers. Yep, Oops. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then after we get done slicing them up and shaping them, we take them down here to our polishers. Okay. And it's usually a five week period. Five weeks? And I thought it took a long time just to smoke a brisket. Gotta wash me hand off. It's a messy here. job, huh? Yes, it is. It's a dirty, messy job, but somebody's gotta do it. That's how I feel about day tripping. If you love this stuff, by far the easiest thing to do is just buy some rocks from Sue. But I'm not an easy way kind of guy. Luckily, guiding rock hunts into the Texas desert is just one of the many things Sue does for customers. And I must really trust her because I have no idea where she's taking us. Where are we? We're out in the middle of nowhere. I can tell. <laughs> My major question is, who was the first person to figure out this was a good place to hunt rocks? Because it looks exactly like every other place out here. A surveyor. Hey, they just graded the road out here and there's rocks everywhere. Yeah. Well, aren't there rocks everywhere, everywhere? Not agate. Okay, not the special <laughs> rocks. And that's Balmeray Blue, which on the ground actually looks white from a special kind of sun bleaching. We're scanning. Scanning, scanning, We're looking, looking, looking. for that white, tarnished sort of look. I see one! Aha! You see it? Yes. The white on the outside, but as you, if you see the little telltale sign that there's something clear underneath that white. See, this like is that. white too, but a totally different white. Completely. And yeah, there's nothing in this one. No. Come on! Don't waste my time! Once you can tell the fakes, that gets you better at telling the real you ones. You can really tell a rock hunter if they look rock. <laughs> that one's no good. It's a no good place. way to get your calcium. Yeah. It takes some training for sure, but mostly a lot of walking. Looks like a pretty good one over here, all buried. Ooh. You just never know if it's gonna be buried, big piece, little piece, or what. Easter egg hunting. Balmeray blue agate. That's the blue. Oh, cool. So there is agate to be found, but it does take some looking, both for agate, snakes, or anything else that could be hiding in the desert. Oh, oh, hey, kid, what are you doing here? Nothing, sir, we're just rock hunting. Oh, no, you're trailing me, aren't you? No. Listen, are you working for Big Sal? No. Little Sal? No. Medium Sal? No. Oh, no, Sal Senior? No. Sal Junior? No. The sister Sally. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You gotta get out of here. All right. Okay. Hold this and ah. now scram. They'll never catch Balmeray Bill. You'd think that guy would be better at hiding by now. Back to my agate adventure. I think I've done well, but I need Sue's confirmation. Okay. It find, was. Yeah. It was a good idea to bring a bag. I found a bunch of stuff. This one. Is that agate? Nope. This was one, okay, all right, nope. It had this these markings here and I was like, well, I don't think it's agate, but is it any, oh, all right. This one was big. You need the lick test, I'll lick it. I, I picked it up. If you pick it, you lick it. Ow. Oh, no. 
<laughs> Told you. That is wood. Nice. Nice piece of petrified, petrified wood. wood. But this need... is definitely a nice piece, and it's got some Betroidial on the top. Okay, of, of course it does. I of knew, course I knew, it does. I knew that. Uh, what's <laughs> what is the Betroidial? Betroidial is where it just gets lumpy. It's oh. kind of lump, lump, lump. Step one is I, I think I passed. I passed agate 101, which yes, is just find it on the ground. Agate 201 is find good pieces of agate on the ground. Yeah. I'm not quite there yet. Well, I did it. Found some Balmeray blue agate, which I'm going to leave with Sue to polish up and make all shiny for me. You drive through Balmeray and you think there's nothing there but swimming, but it's been one discovery after another, like a pack of wild turkeys roaming town. If you can't find anything to eat in Balmeray, just uh, grab yourself a turkey. Make yourself a sandwich. When you approach a turkey in the wild, you have to be extra careful. At any moment, they could attack. That's nuts. They're running the streets like, like stray dogs, stray turkeys. I've got something better in mind than wild turkey for dinner. At one of the best Mexican food joints I've come across in Texas that just happens to be in Balmeray. Cueva de Oso, translation, Bear Den. And these are its owners, Farinda and Joel Madrid. Who's, who's the bear of this bear cave? That's gotta be you. She doesn't look hairy enough. Papa Bear. Now, Papa, Papa Bear? bear. Papa Bear. <laughs> First opened 25 years ago as a snack shop, the food was simply too good to be left to snacking. And now Joel and Farinda are living the American dream via a Mexican restaurant. I used to sell burritos on the street back when my younger days, you know, my parents would make burritos, I would go out there and eat. This year was my, one of my goals in life. I mean, this, I, I wanted to be a self-employed self owner restaurant. And now Bear Den is a Texas tradition, where you'll find some of the finest West Texan Mexican food that your hard-earned dollar can buy. You'll notice I didn't call it Tex-Mex, because it's not. Tex-Mex is based on chili con carne, but out here, it's all about the enchilada sauce. Our red sauce is still, we still buy the chili pots. Mm, yeah. we, still, we, we still cook our chili pots. Yeah. Our, our green sauce, the same thing from scratch. Three tortillas, and that's your enchilada plate. I mean, that comes from, you know, from my parents, from uh, way, way back in the grew up, parents we grew, grew up, up with, with, that, with that. I guess they say it's like my mom made it. That's the way my mom used to make it, you know? Sorry, mom, but you never cooked like this. And tonight, Joel's making me their top selling dish. Tacos a la parilla. Grilled steak simmered with onions, tomatoes, and jalapenos. Layers of cheese topped with lime and a big slice of fresh avocado. When I dream in Spanish, this is what I dream about. Oh man, these definitely qualify as some of the prettiest tacos I've ever eaten. Yes, 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 yes. The best part about it is it's not just ground beef, it's sliced beef, but it's set there and it's sizzled on that grill with the jalapenos and the onions. Whoo! This taco is easily worth the trip to Balmeray alone. And the best news is, I still have two tacos left. Whew. What a day. Who'd have thought that in the land of mountains and desert would be such an abundant oasis? And ain't it funny that sometimes it takes a small town to remind us that the world and Texas are much bigger than we ever dreamed. So I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Hey, hey, kid. You all following me. Get out of here. Get out of here. So what do you do in the Texas heat when it's too hot to go outside? Nope, never mind. So what do you do in the hot Texas summer when the heat, never mind. So what do you do when the Texas heat is on in the summertime? Well, you got a couple options. You could stay inside in the AC. No, no, no. Gotta get my land legs back. You're so weightless when you're underwater. Booty. <laughs> Believable? Come on out of there. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's more pure than what I take baths in every night. Because I'm a bath guy. I like to soak a little bit now and then, okay? Candles. Oh, can, you know, maybe some bubbles. Maybe uh, some, a nice- Some uh, salts. <laughs> the best salts. Oh, man. The best you of Kenny are, G? <laughs> Maybe. I think I'm more of an Inya guy, personally. <laughs> sail away, sail away, sail away.
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, Condios, amigas.